work on this song. This Jackie, she's she's bossy, man. You know? I, I mean, what the? <laughs> Holy smoke, man! Makes me nervous as hell. I love it though. Let's just fucking do it. You're in command, man. <laughs> I like that. I just think that the magic's in the little things. The magic is in the little things. I agree with you. All right, so D. D minor. D minor. D minor. You always do that. Right. You're like A, but it's A minor. F. G. A. A, A major. Oh. Where's your D minor up on the... So do like you're doing an actual D, D. like it's just a D. I, you know, you guys, I don't know what I'm playing. <laughs> so do you right. know what a D is? <laughs> like it, up here? That's a grade I got in music. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. Is. Holy shit. before though uh i think i capoed at four. Oh, that's why i was like what the, what's yeah. going on okay i capoed right. at four and i think it was here in title t- nope that's wrong here in title town they walk so heavy nearly nope can you play the the, the track from your phone yeah because that, that was cool so what you were doing you were doing like some picking <laughs> Sounds like the Civil War a little bit up front. Here in Tidal Town, they walk so heavy, nearly shake the ground. Carrying the city like they wear the cross. Old steel workers and auto shops. Wrap your knuckles and answer the call. Stand up right or take the fall. Bring your game, cause we play for keys. We might be short on talent, but hard with D. Cut us up or knock us down. We're still standing in title town. Rusty warriors, pound for pound, all they still stand. Shopping your skills, run no whiskey and pop no pills. Early to bed and early to rise. Say your prayers for the stand up guys. Cause cut us off or knock us down. We're still standing in title town. Rusty warriors, pound for pound. They still stand. up off the floor they bet against us we proved them wrong we're hard as rock we're built steel strong yeah cut us up or knock us down we're still standing in title town all rusty warriors pound for pound all oh, they still stand those chords better than actually that's a half step lower i believe because we're doing yeah, and, it, I don't tell. yeah. and that was um so it's higher um, 
the original is a half step lower. So we're, we're just playing half step higher. I think the same, I think, the same progression. Though. I think maybe if I w were to choose, I think my, our chords, the ones that I, I made up might be just a bit more like bolder sounding. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So All that right. would be cool. Yeah, hell yeah. So did you like the um, version that I sent? I you did. Like, did you like, you liked the chorus is what you liked. I liked, let's play it. Here in Tidal Town, the walks of heaven nearly shake the ground. Carry the city like they wear the cross. Old still workers in their auto shops. Lock your knuckles, answer the call. Stand the bridle, take the fall. Show on Thailand, but in how we did. You better bring your game because we play for keeps. Cut us up or knock us down. Rusty war is pound for pound. Ain't never been for a lack of dragon. Take them hits and we still stand and cut us up or knock us down. Rusty war is pound for pound. Take a left, cause we're renowned. We still stand in inside old town. Oh, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I love it. Okay. So you <laughs> yeah. got that in your head a little bit? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, you said that there was lyrically, like, we needed to do something. Yeah, I don't know what it was. There's something there that doesn't Just rhyme sit, right? enough or something. I think it's in that part where it's... It's Drop hard. your knuckles, answer the call. Stand up right to take the fall. Short on talent, but in hot with D. You, you better bring your game because we play for keeps. Is that what it is? No, that's great. Uh, is it in the chorus? Maybe. Cut us up and knock us down. Rusty warriors pound for pound. Ain't never been for a lack of trying. Take them hits and we're still standing. Cut us up and knock it's that. us down. It's trying and standing. It's a weird thing for me because it's like Shel oh. Silverstein. It doesn't. Oh. It doesn't. Okay. Rhyme exactly, okay. and I know it doesn't need to, but it's okay. kind of the, the, the trying and standing. I don't know. Um, I'm okay with it though. We could figure out the words later. What do you think? Repeat it one more I, time. I I sort of I'm the kind of person that like I I make songs I make, make it work. the words fit. Yep. If it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but. It is based on the person singing it. So I'd like to hear you sing it. Um, do you want to, like, let's run through it mm -hmm. once and let him sing the way that I wrote it. Yeah. And see what happens. Okay. Because it might not work for you. What works for me might not work for you. Can you sing that sexy? Definitely not. No, no, no. Sing no. it how you, I love the, like, the breakup in your voice <laughs> and everything. Definitely not. Definitely not. I have all these notes to talk about bugs in in regards to like this sultry violin kind of vibrato that you do yeah. with your voice it's yeah yeah cool yeah so let's uh let's play three guitars at one time <laughs> i'm okay. not gonna i'm not gonna play you're not gonna play i don't think so because i'm gonna i'll f i'll okay. fuck up yeah. all right okay <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to um, just throw a couple fill things in there. And... You're going to sing too, though. We'll sing together? No, you're going to sing. Oh, come on, Jackie. I'll uh, help you. Do we want to put uh, reverb on this? Whatever like helps you. You just go in whenever, and I'll, and I'll help you uh, whatever. Okay. Here in Tidal Town, they walk so heavy, nearly shake the ground. Carrying the city like they wear the cross. Old steel workers and auto shops. Wrap your knuckles and answer the call. Stand up right or oh, take the fall. Cut us up or knock us down. Oh, I fucking uh, yeah, yeah, missed yeah. it. Yeah, that yeah, changed move, it a little bit. I yeah, move, that's I good though. I stuff around, sorry. All right, that's okay. Let me, let me just draw a line. Where was that at? So oh, I see. I switched your Bring game or play for keeps. Richard. Here in Tidal Town, they walk so heavy, nearly shake the ground. Carrying the city like they wear the cross. Old steel workers and auto shops. Wrap your knuckles and answer the call. 
Stand up right, oh, take the fall Short on talent, but in the heart we're deep Bring your game, because we'll play for keeps Cut us up and knock us down Rusty warriors pound for pound And it will be a boy like a giant Take them hits and we still stand and Cut, cut us, us up and knock, knock us down Rusty warriors pound for pound <laughs> right, 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 right. Sorry, I had to go down a little bit. So where, where, what are you All saying right. there in that part? So it's cut us up or knock us down. Rusty yep. warriors, pound for pound, ain't never been for a lack of trying. Oh, I like that. Take like them that. hits and we're still standing. Cut us up and knock us down. Rusty warriors. Now, how does that pound. feel on your voice? Is that too high for you? It's a little high, but okay. I'm going to um, try to make it on. work. It sounds good. Does so, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to reach a little bit because I'm not. Yeah. I don't sound like you're not warmed up. You're not warmed up. <laughs> and you're probably going to sing it better than I dictate it. So. Okay, Vindy. I, I, like, I like that chorus. I like that chorus. I think it's a really freaking good I, chorus. I have, I have one. One have idea, note? which I might bring up in a little bit, but um, and just it, it go goes, n yeah. But let's go through. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. <laughs> Town. They walk so heavy and nearly shake the ground Carrying their city like they wear the cross Old steel workers and auto shops Wrap your knuckles and answer the call Stand up right or take the fall Short on talent but in heart we're deep Bring your game because we play it for keeps Cut us up and knock us down Rusty warriors pound for pound Ain't never been for a lack of trying Take them hits and we're still standing Cut us up or knock us down Rusty warriors pound for pound Take a look cause we're renowned We're still standing in Tidal Town In Tidal Town Boys, shopping your skills, run no whiskey and pop no pills. Early to bed or early to rise, say your prayers for the stand up guys. Win five champions, be five more. As we rise up off the floor, bet against us, we proved them wrong. We're hard as rock, but we're built still strong. Cut us up and knock us down. Rusty warriors pound for pound Ain't never been for a lack of trying Take them hits and we're still standing Cut us up and knock us down Rusty warriors pound for pound Take a look cause we're renowned We're still standing in Tidal Town Up and knock us down. Rusty warriors pound for pound. Ain't never been for a lack of trying. Take them hits and we're still standing. Cut us up and knock us down. Rusty warriors pound for pound. Take a look, cause we're renowned. We're still standing in the title town. Yeah, we're still standing.
Ladies and gentlemen, listeners, lovers, and friends, that's how the Vindies make your song better. <laughs> uh, you had it there all along, though. You had the whole premise of it. I mean, this is a great... Um, this is a great song. When are we going to the studio to record this thing? That's all I want to know. We, we could record it tonight if we really hey, want to. Yeah, no man. We'll get it done before dinner, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listeners, lovers, and friends, welcome back to the prod up above Dave Grohl Alley in beautiful downtown Warren. I'm going to turn off... Am I going to turn that off? I'm going to turn off, thank you, the reverb, because it was getting, <laughs> it was <laughs> taking a little bit out of what I was trying to say. Welcome back. We've got to thank our wonderful sponsors of season three, gold and silver sponsors. I'm going to run through the list, and then we'll ask our guests if they've ever used these services. Starting with Coates Car Care, Station Square Restaurant in Liberty on Belmont. Uh, uh, Avenue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Salvatore's Italian Grill, with three locations, Howland, Austin Town, and Niles. And of course, our neighbors down the road, Modern Methods Brewery on Dave Grohl Alley. So, Salvador's. Love it. Love it. Oh. Salvador's, fantastic. I mean, we at least. One of the best, one of the best restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we go there at least once a month in Austin Town. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. You know, I've never been to that one in Austin Town. Station Square, we've been there. We um, we were there, well, we don't go as often, but man, talk about some good food. Killer, man. Yeah. 450 wines. They've won the Wine Spectator Best of Award, I think it's three years in a row now, mm -hmm. uh, because they've got an amazing selection of wine. If you go there, ask for Ottavio Musumeci, who's the owner, and tell him I sent you, because he's a rad dude. Cool. Um, Musumeci? Musumeci. Uh, I had Shane Herman in uh, the last episode, uh, and he was saying, actually, maybe that was in season one, <laughs> and he was saying, Musumechi sounds like Mufasa. Mufasa Musumechi. You know, it's like this whole thing. <laughs> He's a comedian, so it sounded a lot more funny than what I made it. Um, and then you guys are here all the way from Youngstown, and you're going to get to taste some Modern Methods Brewery. I, I did not bring you gift cards for Coates Car Care. They have five locations. They use all made in the USA Simonized products, so go USA, USA. <laughs> uh, and uh, but I did get our guests some Modern Methods gift cards. Which, if you are a listener and you are a subscriber of the podcast, all you've got to do is go to the MDI Powered Studios Podcast dot net, the Podcast dot net, and sign up. For free giveaways, you, you could add, you, we could sing another song. We could go right into like a modern method song. He'll do that throughout. He'll just like, you know, be the John Batiste of our Stephen Colbert show. Modern methods, I love your beer. I don't have nothing to fear. When I go down Dave Grohl Alley, I want to drink your beer so. Modern methods, my Modern methods, modern methods, modern methods, modern methods, modern methods, modern methods, oh, 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 sorry, <laughs> that was Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome to the show Miss Jackie Popovic and Mr. Rick Deke from the yeah. Vindies. Man, what a, what a crazy way to bring the show in. Like, I'm really like jacked right now yeah yeah that was that was nice that was nice <laughs> hopefully can... people will listen to it and not skip it <laughs> but i think it's a cool to look at you know the process of, of songwriting because um it's different all the time and when you brought this song to us title town i absolutely loved it. i don't work on like a lot of different things unless i like it so this one i was just i i knew exactly what we needed and it wasn't a lot like we just you know rearranged it a little bit so you good kudos to you you're warming the cockles of my heart, Dad. <laughs> uh, so, prodders out there, you know, yours truly dabbles in some music, as, as some of you guys know. And just recently, on August 13th, we had the Night of Champions in Youngstown, where the five 
uh, champions from Youngstown uh, came and we had been working on a project for years. Uh, I hate to admit how long we've been working on it. I'm kind of educating our guests as well, called Title Town, which uh, Ray Mancini and I started to put together probably eight years ago and shot some footage for it. And Joe Schiavone and Lou Schiavone came to me and said, hey, we're doing this thing. Can you like put a kind of a sizzle reel together for each one of these fighters to introduce them? And I was like, man, you know, years ago, I wrote this song called Title Town as a and I thought, man, this would be a great song for my uncle, the late, great Frank Castellano to sing on because I am a little self-conscious of my singing and obviously my guitar playing. Thank, thank you, Rick, for coming and Jackie for Saving coming. Us. Yeah, to, to save my, uh, my untalented fingers. Um, and I, so I sent it to Jackie just kind of out of nowhere. Well, we were talking about having you back on the show because you guys just released your latest album, Bugs, which is like the super best this is like the terrible way to say it but i'm a writer the super the best, super best. <laughs> it sounds like a donald trump kind of thing <laughs> Jesus. as you're moving your hands yeah up, up and down like donald <laughs> don yeah it's like honestly this album is probably the best rock and roll album that i've heard come out of the area in 20 plus years Whoa. and probably Whoa. And, and and yeah i know that's probably and now it's like you have all this shit to live up to the pressure's on <laughs> but from track one through track 10 it is a incredible ride and i was so like inspired by it of course jackie was on last year she played a couple songs from it and just on a whim i was like hey jackie um because she's got a fucking much better voice than me and i was like hey check this song out and see what you think so I sent her the track, um, which we'll plug in and you guys can listen to it. Cause I think I love this idea of being off the tightrope, like, or I'm sorry, being on the tightrope with no net underneath, like what we just did. So Prodders out there, we just played this song that you heard for the first time together ever. It's the first time I heard it actually. Jackie played, played it for me at home. Um, well back on a couple weeks ago. And um, we all know we were messing with it. We were for messing a, with it, and minute. honestly, we but, came up with a really great part. And then we were like, "Oh, that sounds like a bridge. Like we can't do that." Yeah. And then we'll, we we were like, "We're gonna." And we figure totally out that. forgot what we did for the bridge. <laughs> we we didn't record it. Which <laughs> if you don't record it, it then you're. Screwed. We're like, "Oh, this is the best thing since you know sliced bread, of course." And <laughs> uh, and then we didn't record it, and then those are. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> and then and then that always happens. happens. Yeah, but right? you know, it came. I think it came out better because then I started poking around on it. Um, you know, just recently, like a week and a half ago, or something like that, and I came up with that cool chorus. Yes. yes. So, yeah, yeah. and she sent it to me, and at first, I, I I was like, well, you sent me two scratch tracks. The second one you sent, I was like, oh man, that's that's like a cool vibe. It's it's different than what I sent, but it's more hummable, for lack of better terms, like. And this is what's kind of cool about Bugs is there's a lot of the tracks that are on your guys' albums that are fucking earworms. Bugs, the title track number seven on the album being being that in and of itself. My son and I have been like walking around. He's eight years old. It, it's on rotation in my vehicle. And so he walks around and he's like humming it after listening to it for maybe like two times. Cool. And uh, I always think like that's a great indicator of like how music uh, – becomes part of our DNA. Like it kind of fuses into us and now we're singing, you know, this stuff. So sent it to Jackie, she sent this thing over and now here we are kind of writing this song f for all the world to see in a live setting, which I think is, uh, I like that. I like artists. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. we bounced um, back and forth between, you know, I sent you a couple of drafts this week and then whatever you sent me back was just like, Good, like the progress and I was like getting mad at you for just not saying anything and just saying she'd be like I don't progress. think he likes it I, yeah I thought you hated it I was like why isn't he saying anything so I like I'd rather you like tear it apart than like say sounds good well, like, she's expecting you to reply in like two minutes though right? well, no that's not true more like yeah five right <laughs> so I got that vibe actually like when, honestly, God, when I when you sent it, I was with my my dad was in town this past week, and we're moving my uncle into a nursing home, and so I had so many things going on. See, people have other things to do, Jackie. <laughs> you know. But but when I got the you first, thought I was mad at you. No, I, but I did. I was like, after I responded, I'm like, man, I really didn't give her a whole lot. You didn't give me anything. Because it, it was kind of the first 
track you sent was kind of late at night and i was like i listened to it and i may have been drinking and then i was like <laughs> yeah i was like was she drinking because it was kind yeah, of probably yeah. but the enunciation of some of the lyrics i was like eh, i don't know and then you sent me another one and the other one i was like yeah and i always kind of want to hold back i don't want to say and like my initial thing was like oh i really like this but i don't want to say I really like it and then listen to it two days later and then be like "Ooh, I told her I really liked it and now like I I really don't but now I'm painted into this corner <laughs> where it's like you know because we're we're uh sometimes artists we can be our egos can be fragile I know you're like very fierce and very honest and upfront which I love when I sent that track to you initially I just recorded it on one rip in my office on my acoustic and i was like i said it, i was like "Ooh, i don't know man this is like it's scary right because part of being on stage or part of sharing your work your art with some with others that you're you know that you respect i have a, a, a tremendous amount of respect for both of you so i've been a fan of rick's from a distance i told him earlier today it's the first time we met um he's getting out of the car i'm like man we got rock stars walking down <laughs> downtown warren i gotta get you guys off the street before you get bum rushed you know rick uh I follow him kind of like with cinematic years ago when they were signed uh, with Atlantic. Jack and I talked about that last time with Barry on the show. And so she sent me a text last night and was like, Hey, should I bring Rick? And I was like, Hey man, like totally up to you. Like how, how whatever the vibe is. But then I was like, man, as I'm typing this, I'm like, oh, I don't want to like make it sound like I don't want him to come. Cause like, <laughs> but I want him to like be it, whatever yeah, you want, whatever you, you know, want. like whatever yeah. you want. But then so then I'm like writing, I'm like, well, you know, he's a way better guitar player than me. And like, he's only gonna add to this obvious, which obviously what you did, and he's only gonna add to it. So like, fuck yeah. And then as of this morning, I, I wanted to like write back and go like, do you wanna bring, um, what's your dude's name? Uh, uh, Chad Anthony, or not Chad Anthony. John, that's John, John Anthony. Anthony. Chad Anthony yeah, is, a, is the other. Is a chef? A restaurant. Yeah. Are they related? No. no. Okay, okay. No. Yeah. I was like, I was going to say, like, you want to bring John Anthony the and, like, Tim is, Harper, too? The point is, yeah. you and I are bad at text communicating. 100%. Yes. <laughs> That's 100. the point of that. Well, I don't know, though, because we kind of wrote this song over, like, over text, which is yeah. kind of wild. Yeah. And, and we're going into the psychology of texting. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I mean, that's really. where the miscommunication happens. Right. In the, you know. Right. But, like, how many things do you think about when somebody replies just something simple that... You know, you don't know what's going on on their end, but you read way too much into that. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> does, my fir my first reply was like, "Oh, that's interesting," oh, which is yeah, like, "No, the fucking like just just kill me right now." Yes. Oh, it sounds interesting. interesting. Why don't you just tell me to go fuck, fuck myself. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's what you said. I know. That's what you said. I could have just died right there. Okay, just just cut me up. Oh, but shit. honestly, as a songwriter or a pr I would say a producer um, of anything um whether it's i, I don't know wh who is more because artists definitely have like a little bit of that um fight for their creative stubbornness um but me i'm very logical and i will put a reason behind something and i will tell you and if you're like if you give me a, a logical reason back why it doesn't work there or something that else i'm like Totally. I am. I, I love like collaborating. Um, us two wrote most of the stuff for the latest album, Bugs. And we go back and forth and he, like he'll fight for, you know, something that he wants to really push on there. And he goes, no, no, Jack, no, you got to like listen to this and then hear this. And, and sometimes we'll, we'll go back and forth like that. And you can if you are afraid to like say your piece on a on your creative um, input, then you're not going to make it any better. You're just going to be afraid to like, OK, this is this is, you know, someone maybe they have more experience than you and, you know, or you could visualize it like something that's worth fighting for. You might not see it yet, but I have to convince you yeah. that this is going to make it better. Yeah, convince me. Like, you... why is it a good idea, mm -hmm. you know? And if you have that behind it, at least, then we can we can definitely come together in agreement. Well, I love that you, for, for, and just to kind of reiterate what you guys are saying, like, people are afraid to hurt others' feelings, right? So it's like, oh. Can't be afraid. You got to leave it at the door. You got to sure. leave it at the door, right? All ego has to be at the door. Because artists are fragile. 100%. And and when you're putting yourself out there, it's difficult to take that. But the, the underlying um, 
part of this is the respect that you have for the people that you're writing the song with because you know that it's coming from a good place. So you take it in stride and you know it's not a personal thing. It's just she's seeing it differently than I am or John Anthony's seeing it differently and you just fight for your part. Yeah. I mean, I just sat down with um, a couple of Nashville songwriters um, recently and they just taught me that if you just project what you're thinking, the other one or two people around you, it might be cheesy or whatever, but saying it out well, loud in it. front of the other person might give them an idea to bounce back off of. So what happens if you don't say those things? Then you're gonna miss your magical moment. Right. So as cheesy or as corny as it might sound on chords or lyrics or melody, you just throw it out there anyway because you never know what's gonna hit. Sometimes what you think is cheesy is like a hit to somebody else or is a like, uh, genius to some, somebody else. So Well, they take it and they can twist it and turn it into something that's better. Like, uh, I always say, like, you know, you have to just kind of let go and be in free fall and just be willing to kind of bounce off the wall and take the hits a little bit because once you get to that place where others, like you guys, can, you know, you're grabbing me and saying, like, like on that first rip we did, like, man, I was missing the lines. Like, I didn't know where they were at first time we're doing it. And you're filling in. It's like, oh, okay, cool. She's grabbing me and kind of propping me up. Rick's come, Brett grabbed me, propped me up. Like, I love that you changed the lyrics, you know, the, the sequence of the lyrics and then added your own. Like, we're creating a, a, a mosaic together, right? And the only way to do that is to share the paint so to speak and like hey jim and you know, i that walked doesn't... in here and you said you said i don't like those lyrics i honestly was thinking that you were gonna say i don't really like those that chorus lyrics like i, I but love you it could have said that and i would have been cool with it and i'd be like why because i really like it you know right <laughs> well even like you had just explained too um when i first heard it the line um take a look because we're renowned you Great. Didn't I was, I yeah, said. I didn't know what you're saying, yeah. right? So I was like, man, I don't know about that. And then when you told me, it was like, oh, man, that makes the absolute most amount of sense. So I don't think this whole song is done right no, i think we, we can like some, really sharpen it up but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. man what a great um foundation that we have yeah. yeah the bones are there for sure would you would you say it's interesting <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i don't think jackie's ever gonna let me live that down and uh i do want to i want to ask you about some what really is interesting not the kiss of death kind of interesting but like this progression from musically where you guys were the Vindies a few years ago to where this album is. Now we had talked right after Jackie was on right after COVID was just actually, it was still happening, but like the lockdown was just kind of breaking free and you guys were kind of writing this apart from one another for lack of better terms and together, but like the whole band, right? You're yeah. sending different tracks and you're kind of feeling your way through and you had played a couple of songs on the show. And I had sent them over to uh, Kenny Antonelli, who is a, was the former uh, president of Red Distribution for Sony Records. And he was like, oh, yeah, she sounds OK. Like, it's it's OK. You know, I mean, he wasn't he's very blunt and to the point. Right. And so then I sent him three tracks finished off the Bugs album. And I had sent Jackie a text prodders out there and I said, hey, if you were to pick one track off here, this is your song, which one is it? Which this is like the most unfair question, right? Because it's like <laughs> impossible to pick. Like, how do you pick? I your... can't believe I answered it back then. <laughs> how do you pick your babies? Like, how do you pick which one you love the most, right? Yeah. Wait, was um, was Bugs the answer the last time? Uh, apparently, because I okay. have not been telling people which song I thought was the best. And maybe at the time, you know, it was just being finished or something. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited about it or something. Well, because I usually don't pick. You you didn't. Oh, you, yeah, okay. you didn't in the text thread. I actually picked and I said, for me, it's Bugs. And that was the one I sent Kenny. Okay. I wanted you to kind of answer it. So I, I'm not the one selecting the track to send him. But I was like, fuck it. I'm just yeah. going to send the one that. So I sent him that and I sent him two other tracks. And this is this is what he said um, verbatim. I wrote it down. So I want to find my notes. He said, uh, Kenny Antonelli, loved Bugs. All these songs show solid growth from the material I heard before. Also, the sound quality and mix were really well done. So, 
I've got a bunch of questions surrounding this. My first question with that, with that is, let's talk about who mixed it and and the addition of these nonverbal kind of chants that are layered into that track. Like, where'd they come from? Because I think that adds to the earworm, right? There's something going on. I don't know exactly how to put my finger on it. First off, there's all this stuff that's happening, right? And I love... You know, you'd said on the other show, like how you kind of came up with it. You had a, a bee's nest in your wall and, you know, the clicking and the buzzing and you know, you've incorporated the, the what happened to you in your life into your art, which is just this amazing uh, uh, amalgamation of like it's almost like I hate to use like Manchurian candidate kind of stuff, but it's almost like, you know, they're in my head that that, you know, it's like. They're in your head. The song gets in your head like these bugs were in your wall. All right, so here's my question. Um, tell me about the, the the mix, you know, who mixed it and how that worked out. And then tell me about um, how you guys, an- what was added, that nonverbal kind of chanting. There's voices there that's happening, but I don't know exactly well, what it is. Maybe let's start off with Rick here, um, who um, <clears throat> well, brought a beat to me. Yeah, well, when... Um when we started out bugs and we we started tracking because we we tracked everything um in in canfield at my guest talk studio yeah called court street so that's where all the tracking um was done but when this song was complete um you know the the drums has uh it, that's an 808 drum you know so it has this this heavy beat to it it has you know this uh danceable feel and um there's a guy from uh canfield who moved out to to new york city uh ryan west if you all know him but he um he mixed some stuff for and worked um on rihanna's albums um eminem who else jay-z jay-z so i reached out to ryan um specifically for bugs and said hey give this a listen um i i would love for you to mix this uh, he checked it out, loved it, and and Ryan mixed. That's the only song on the album that Ryan mixed. Um, it is the Bug song. So he he was he was the guy. He did a great job. Kudos me, to you, yeah. Ryan West, wherever you are, because yeah. it's freaking awesome. Let me add to what you're saying. So Rick brings this beat to me. Um, at the same time, I'm having beat issues above my bed, um, like thousands of yellow jackets in the wall um, that could have just like come down at any night like while I was sleeping and killed me basically (laughs) so um, I loved the symbol the symbolism of the fact that you know what I write how I songwrite is also about as much as um, it's about what bugs me (laughs) for lack of a better word Um, you know I, I let things go after I write them down on paper um, on, through song and I just let them memorialize as a song and so it's um, at this time I was putting together songs we had released an album and the last album was 2017 so I had a collection of songs that I noticed a pattern in already that it was you know stuff that you know bugs me that I just want to you know get out there get off my chest and and then set it free let it go um, artistically um you know, this was a way different song than anything else on the album. And it is the only song that was mixed by Ryan West out in, in New York City, which we had, you know, deliberated for some time about the very fact that, well, would won't it sound so much different than everything else on the album if we have one person mix this song or and then the rest of the album mixed by somebody else um, who Jim Stewart was that person that mixed the rest of the album with the exception of Morning Light which um, Mike Estock had mixed so yeah yeah so um, so we were deliberating on that but I thought that this song it I think that as a songwriter I I see the end goal for a song and it really doesn't matter to me about you know making it a a cohesive sound. I feel like I've been fighting for that for such a long time, but as a songwriter, I just have to learn that I have to roll with it and make the song as good as possibly it can possibly be. So with this particular song, because it is a beat driven song, this is the first time we've done it with an 808, you know, um, I, I just wanted it to 
to sound the way that it should sound, Ryan West it was the person for that song. Maybe he wasn't the person for the rest of the album, but for that song, he needed to do it. Well, let's get back to the the how the sequence of these songs are presented in the album. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap back around that because I, I think it's kind of neat that this is the nugget that's in the middle of these other layers, the front six songs and the back three songs after Bugs. You know, it does sound different, but it leads you on this. This is what's this is what I love. I guess I'm not going to wrap back to it. We're just going to go right into it. <laughs> um, this is what I love about great albums. Um, I'm a gigantic Led Zeppelin fan, so I can put on Led Zeppelin any of their albums, with maybe the exception of Coda, but that's a whole other conversation in and of itself, and you can just let them go. You don't have to change, you know, pick up the needle, you don't have to flip the CD, or flip flip the CD, you don't have to flip the cassette, (laughs) I'm dating myself, you don't have to hit the track, you're not fast forwarding, you just kind of let it go, it's going to take you on a journey. That is this album for me. And I think for everybody that I've let listen to it, they're like, man, dude, you just put this shit on, just let it roll. And it takes you on this journey and it takes you, this is great storytelling, right? Great storytelling is, you know, acts one through three, you're leading them up, you know, you start high and then you lead them up the hill and then you drop down and then you lead them up another bigger hill and then you drop it down and you lead them up another one. Then you drop them down. Speaking of the term coda, um, track 10, uh, all and everything is kind of like the coda to this album. It kind of ends it on a, um, like a Nina Simone ish, um, I just want to be your queen. Like that whole, yeah. it ends the album kind of softly. It's like a, the, the beautiful calm after a storm because you've taken these, the listener on these rides. Some of these songs, um, I'll kind of go in sequence with the album here in a minute, but these songs have either you know they're punching you in the face or they're kind of wiping the tears off you you know and and i think you bring up a point because you know one of the missing arts is the art of the album yes you know and in the approach of this collection is collection of songs is an album um in its entirety and it and it is designed to take you through this space and time between these songs um to to just tell a story uh, from beginning to end or make you feel a certain way from beginning to end. So, you know, even though there are singles written in mind that, hey, this is this should be the single, but it, it is a well-rounded album. And I think and that was by design. A little bit of both, I would say, you know, the singles that we had, like, Are You Ready? I almost left off. Um that was a song that that I, would have been a mistake, Jackie. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad I put it on there. Yeah. Um, that that is something because it that fit, they it fit the rest of of the album. That's why we included it. Well, in the sequencing right, and how yeah. you laid those tracks in, right? You're like, it's not like you wrote these in order and you were Correct. purposely like, oh, we're gonna go, you know, take them to the peak and then drop them down, take them to the peak. It's you know how you how you put the sequence together in you know track one through ten. Um, speaking about Are You Ready, you know, that was kind of like the Pittsburgh. Um, tell me about that. The Yeah, Are You Ready? We wrote for the Pittsburgh Pirates um, season a couple years back, and they started using it for the P- P- uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates or the Penguins now, too. And the YSU has picked it up for their football walkout song. Um, so that kind of had a little bit more legs than than we thought, and we're, we're hoping that that grows a little bit more. Um, but I was in the whole vein of, they need a song for you know sports, and um, what is the next, what would be a, a Carrie Underwood-esque Super Bowl type thing? Yeah, very or, anthemic, yeah. Yeah, something that we can write, and I, love a challenge as a songwriter to write something um, with a goal in mind, a challenge in mind. Hey, can you write, you know, a, a baseball fight song, anthem? And so I never even thought about writing one before, and, and I was glad to have that opportunity. Well, it's a great song. It's also kind of wrapped in the cocoon of Bugs, because it's also like Bugs being this kind of dance track if you will and not really i guess it's kind of dance this is the question i had that i wanted to wrap to and go to this but the 808 drums for for laymen like myself what is that um well the 808 is a a drum machine that was used you know back in the 80s so okay it's it's a certain 
kick mm-hmm. sound that um, that you're familiar with that you might not know it's an 808, but when you hear it, it's it's an 808. Well then, so you got that in Bugs, and then the Are You Ready track, which is the very next track on the album, right? So you go from Bugs to Are You Ready, and Good Brother Earl, good friends of mine for a long time, they did the same thing. They were one of the uh, what was the beer that featured? Because it's a beer that sponsors Iron it. Iron City beer, right? So they put this thing together. I'm like, oh man, cool. And then I saw you guys a couple years later. I'm like, oh, the Vindy's got one too. And it's a, a different sound, but it's also kind of like this anthemic. Uh, what's the guy's name? And I'm a boxing guy. Are you, let's get ready to rumble. It's kind of like, are you ready? Like, are you ready to fight? You ready to get down? So I love that. And I was kind of, when I first heard it, I'm like, where. Where is this next album? Because that wasn't on your previous album, right? It this it sat by itself. Yeah, it came out as as, as a single. Oh my God, what a what a thank God you put it on, because <laughs> like it, it would have kind of been a disservice to like just leave that thing hanging. It needs you know the support structure of the rest of the album and really shines. You guys really shine on that. Um, I, I don't know. That's an incredible song. I mean, for a long time, I didn't even want to play it live. <laughs> Were you just sick of it? No, I was just w- weird about the fact that I I didn't write it for the band. I wrote it because someone else prompted me to. Ah, yeah, yeah, You yeah. know? Sure. Um, I didn't, I mean, and that's like maybe just like an artistic direction that I just, you know, had a little bit of, you know, something against. And, and then... I think after a while, after, and you know, we play it in Pittsburgh sometimes, you know, and just, um, and now I'm like, now I play it live and I'm like, hey, we have a non-exclusive agreement with uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. So if Ohio State wants it, please let somebody know. (laughs) So now like NASCAR, calling NASCAR, we're calling everybody. So I'm really proud of it. Um, You know, it's, you know, something that I I had on my phone you and I you had the we had recorded something late at night like a year before and I knew exactly when they called me I was like I have this somewhere in my memo so I looked through the hundreds of memos and found it and I was like this is what we got to do and it was just like a two-line little thing that we had on the phone that we developed within a week really it was not even like it didn't take any time it was so easy yeah because they originally they wanted chasing off the last album the song and, yeah, chasing. I yeah. put my foot down. And Jackie's like, we could write something better for this. I mean, not No, that I didn't you, want to you know. change the lyrics of she a song that cha- I already put out. Yeah, that was right. primarily my Yeah. My thing. But I remember us sitting and it was a late night session where we're like, All right, we need like this fight song. We need something cool. And I and actually I think and I'm trying to think of the name of the um, we actually pulled up a cinematic song. Um, it's the one where where Ken's like, uh, "Come on, come on, come on, let's go." Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And and that was used um, on ESPN um, okay. back in back in 2000. I'm like, you know, something like this where you know, and Jackie's like, "Are you ready?" You know, and and we just we just evolved from there. What a great uh, you know back and forth. Like to have somebody to write with, tell me about that. Like when you're writing solo by yourself, you don't have anybody to bounce ideas. You know, you're like, oh, I think that sounds really good. You got, we were talking, I think before we started recording, like, oh, we came up with this thing and we didn't either write it down or we didn't record it. So it's kind of gone, right? It it, it kind of slips into the ether. But if you have somebody there with you, they can either kind of tell you, oh, it sounds really good, or if you did this, or how about try this part? Tell me about that like collaboration and finding a, a, a collaboration partner, right? A partner in your art. Um, I think it's really important to collaborate. Um, I primarily like to write by myself. I've always, always have. Um, I, I think better on my own, but as soon as I have something, or at least I think I have something, I need to share it out. I need to share it out to as many people as want to as want to hear it and I you know Rick is that person that I go to every single time because he will say yeah that's cool or and and like I'm bothered by just like yeah that's cool <laughs> no, it's interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah that's yeah. interesting interesting yeah. um I'm I'm more looking for like that's cool but you should do this or yeah. that's <clears throat> cool 
let's do something on top of that or you know that melody needs to change or you need a better line there i'm looking for um creative criticism um constructive criticism to push it forward yeah to push it forward to to make it move um you know and and I don't have any, um, you, you really can't have, like we were talking about, you can't have ego behind what you're doing. You just have to make sure that you, you feel good about it. Um, and then, and then share it. So if you know, if you feel like it's crap, sometimes it's like, you know, record it anyway. But, um, you know, if it's, if you feel really good about it, then keep going with it. It's really on a, just, just like a feel kind of thing. If it feels good to you, um, keep going. As far as the songwriting goes, I was looking for a partner, um, while I, I, in between the albums that we were making for the Vindies, we had released in 2017, the LP keep going. And so after that, I was looking for my next thing and I, I was struggling with like, I need a cohesive sound. I need a, like something that's not going to be everywhere because everyone had told me and it was just playing in my head. You're kind of everywhere on this album. You have a little bit of country. You have a little bit of jazz. You have a little bit of rock and pop and blues and whatever. I'm like, OK, well, that's kind of I wish I had a little bit of more direction. So. I had paired up with the only songwriters I knew at the time, um, one or two guys that I knew were really good that I wanted to maybe try and, and work with. And it, it's just like a clicking, a clickability that just n didn't happen. And after one session, I just knew it. I remembered that Rick Deke over here with uh, Radio Lark, um, he had called me to go on to do a song with you for one of your songs on the EP, the black EP that you did. Mm -hmm. And this was a year prior. And I was like, you know what? That guy's a really good songwriter. I called him up. We hung out one night and then we hung out the next night and the next night. And before you knew it, we had um, three months and we had written about an album's worth of songs that have never been released. <laughs> We're saving them. They're really good. Yeah, they're they're yeah they're they're really good. But that's where that trust and that relationship between Jackie and I developed because, you know, we we both sort of worked outside of our box. We both worked out outside of our box, um, writing songs that we. They were like Americana. They were like Americana in in you know a lot of harmonies. I guess if you want to say, Civil Wars esque. Yeah, in a way, um, but, and it was a cool experience, yeah. and and it's something that we just have sat on for five years now. We'll have to release it one of these days. We did one yeah. show. We did with these songs and um, put a little combo group together, a, an upright bass, and um, Brian Cajon Teeters on Cajon and, yeah. slash cymbals or whatever he was doing. But well, how long I, how long have you been playing music, Rick? Like, how long have you been playing guitar, how, and how'd you get into it? Well, I've been playing around around the area for thirty years. I've been playing um, around Youngstown. I've been playing um, I've been playing guitar for thirty five years. Where, you're from Youngstown originally, Boardman. Yep. Where? I'm fr I'm from uh, the west side of Youngstown. Okay. Yep. Grew up right off Steel Street on Manhattan. Did you, what school did you go to? Cheney. You're a Cheney guy. Cheney. What year did you graduate? 1989. Holy shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you look good for a 49. Are you going to be 50 years old? Or Already happened. What? Yes, sir. Whoa, man. Yeah, I'm a Leo. So, it, it, yeah, it was. God uh, bless a you, brother. Ago. Keeping yeah, yeah. that youthful appearance, man. Yeah. Must be all that rock star shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you guys got together and you wrote this thing. I, I want to just throw out, like, because it is a band, right? So Jackie's on vocals. You got John Anthony on guitar, who's a Dana teacher. Does John Anthony teach Dana? Um, John Anthony is at McDonald High School. Okay, okay. But he is a music. He's a yep. music teacher, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Uh, Ed Davis on drums. On drums, yep. Uh, Rick, obviously, you're on guitar. Uh, Matt Jackson on bass. On bass. Clay Colley. Uh, Clay um, was on this album, but he's not touring with us. Gotcha. So he he definitely wrote a lot of the parts for the the keys on the album, though. Uh, Matt or it's Nathan Anthony, Anthony, which is John Anthony's brother, oh. who is on keys touring with us. Nice. He's great. He's great. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching a lot of your guys's like stuff live and whatever because I haven't been able to get out. Um, horns. 
Kyle O'Donnell, my man Tim Harker, who is a fucking savage. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say enough about Tim. I love Tim. Um, Brian Mayo on trombone, and then Scott Boyer on bass. Is that everybody? Scott Scott Boyer, um, he played a, f- a few of the songs on bass on the album. Okay. And Matt Jackson also was on the album as well. Gotcha. Yeah. So you get this kind of like super group together because that's one thing I really notice listening to this. And I've probably listened to this album like uh, 20 times. I mean, I, wow. I, yeah, pro- maybe more. Okay. I mean, I was just listening to it ahead of time because I wanted to like refresh myself with some of the notes that I had in my head. Um, everybody on there. I mean, this is this album is so like you. I've heard a ton of like you know. I hate to use the term locally produced, but you guys are local. You guys are local musicians, right? You're from Youngstown, and I've heard some local stuff. And you're there's always something that's just not tightened up. You know, it's like they didn't put the Allen wrench in and just just turn a little bit tighter. And every part. From the sound design to the way it's mixed to the way you guys play to the space that's created for the other artists to come in and play is so tight, man. And there's there's space in there to kind of leave the audience, the listener, wanting like, where is, oh, and there it is. You know, it's like every time you're ready listening to one of the parts, you're like, oh, is there, and then right at the right time, right at the right point. So you start the album with Judas. Uh, Tell me about the writing process. Tell me about this though. Uh, I I love this line. This is, I geek out on, on words, right? Like I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a poet, right? And so if it does, if it's not in the lyrics for me, I don't care how great the music is. I can't get behind it. Like it just doesn't make into my rotation. I gotta be, in the story, right? So, uh, if only I could wear all the scars of all the beatings of my heart, like it's just such a great line, <laughs> right? And that's in the first 30 seconds before you come in with this, now we're gonna move, right? And I don't know what that's called, you guys can kind of school myself and the prodders out there that are listening, like you're leading in with this 30 seconds of um, very limited instrumentation, mostly vocals kind of soft and then you kick it in and then it starts rocking um it, it's the, the song is total fire to lead in right it's like the scene in uh Raiders of the Lost Ark right which makes here's what makes Raiders of the Lost Ark work if you're a, if you're a filmmaker or you're you're a, you're a film enthusiast the boulder right they're they're climbing up and the boulder comes and he's running and all the indians are uh, not the indians I, I don't know if that's we're even allowed to say that anymore <laughs> but the uh the um all the natives are chasing him and they're shooting these little blow darts at him and he's running and he gets on the thing and then he flies off and it's like this punch you in the mouth and then we slow it down and he goes back to wherever he's teaching indiana jones right that's what this song does for the album right it kind of slows it up it's slow in the beginning and then it punches you in the mouth and then about two minutes in is this ripping fucking guitar solo who is it is that you or is that um, That's John Anthony. John Anthony. Yeah, yeah. John Anthony comes in there ripping. Yeah. I thought it was, and it's it's fire. Yeah, man, it's fire. All right, so tell me about how you wrote the song. Uh, tell me about um, what that thirty seconds is that that opening part where it's just lightly light instrumentation and then up tempo, and then you take us on this journey. Now, we're, now we're kicking. Um, the the first album, Keep Going, from 2017 that we wrote, it was primarily me bringing chords and structure and lyrics to the boys, and then we're arranging it just appropriately, and then they, you know, put everything in this kitchen sink together to, to do it. Now, this one, uh, my goal in mind for the album, um, I like to do something, I like to challenge myself as a songwriter and not do the same things all the time. Um, for this album especially for Judas, I think that it was Im- important for me to have space for everyone to to fill their own little pockets um, throughout the song. So um, at, I didn't necessarily think Judas was a um, intro song into the album. I didn't think with that in mind. I just thought it was appropriate because it kind of previews the rest of the album. Um, Judas has this intro, it goes up, it goes down, it has a rock, 
uh, sense and it goes into this uh, I mean the intro is ballad um, and then and it rips but this time around as far as songwriting goes it's it's more about what where the ride takes you melodically for me so I wasn't even I didn't even touch the guitar I sang this song and you built it around my melody oh wow yeah so, yeah you had you had the chord structure and then it was another it was late like night in my session head, but i couldn't describe it so i would be yeah. sitting there fighting with rick no that's not the chord that's not it and i can't, can't voice it on the guitar or i'd try to and it's just so we did fight a little bit with this one in particular yeah with that one and then then that then the riff they had You know, but and, that whole intro and into that, that was all in my head. I just couldn't describe it. And so you sang it a cappella at first, just out in the open, and then he, you built the guitar licks around it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Wow. No, exactly. Or, or you just couldn't find, you know where you wanted to go, but you couldn't find Maybe the right chords. Maybe we should chords. do it for, as an example, the intro. Yes. Yeah. Please do. Last night you just kissed me It tasted like you missed me Right before we said goodbye Right before I could ask why If only I could wear the scars Of all the beatings of my heart But I won't tell if they can see I needed him, he needed me Oh, I back into that ballady part but with more support killer killer but All that right. one was hard to describe to you guys at first because i had the drums and everything in my head and i just you it, know and, it was and, a fight and you had sure. the chorus somewhere else too it wasn't a part of it was almost two songs yeah i recall I think so yeah you know and i'm like i really love that chorus and that melody and it just yeah we just that was that was a difficult one to put together, but mm-hmm. it, yeah. Well, then when the horns come in, the horns came in last. Like when you brought it to the rest of the group. Oh, I still have the <laughs> reverb on. When you brought it to the rest of the group, then the horns come in. Ba, 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 da, yep. Right, and then yep. you bring, man, it's just so. Tell me about that part because the horns add a whole nother layer that I don't think a lot of bands have. The you know, it's like drum, bass guitar vocals right yeah two guitars a a rhythm and a lead a bass you might have some keys you might have some other shit but the horns just add this other layer that's so great and kind of punches in the mouth so when you brought this to the 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 uh the horn players did they did you have an idea did you kind of say like hey we want it to kind of sound like this or did you just go hey gloves are off what are you guys going to come up with you know i mean we we usually let them kind of bring something to us any ideas but oftentimes it's something that um, John will arrange or I will basically sing to them and then they can play it yeah and basically the um, the horn parts came together in the studio so uh, we we tracked everything we had you know we just had um, some of the last tracks go down are the horn tracks and um, we worked those out, you know, just collectively with them. I know specifically for that song, um, you know, we had some ideas. I know John had some ideas. Kyle usually takes the lead on, you know, a lot of, you know, those horn parts. I just as well. think that the the horns complement um, my vocals on top of a rock band. Yeah, for sure. They just add that, like, it, they're my support group for me being a. Um, and I come from a, a jazz kind of vocal um, background, and to have the horn supporting that with a rock group around me, um, it just kind of gives it a nice compliment. Track number two, If I Want. You have this build up and release, and the release is 
I'm gonna yell if I want. I'm gonna blah blah right. And it is such a. It sounds not musically, but it sounds to me like a put your foot down kind of Carly Simon natural woman. Like this is like a chick anthem. I, I know that's like maybe not the right <laughs> no, I mean, PC I wrote, way to say I wrote it. That with an, that in mind, but I also wanted it to be fun. It's super fun. Yeah. And here's what I love about it. Uh, well, I love all about it, but who are you talking to? Like, I want to know, like, who, who is this? And it might not be Jackie. Who is the narrator of this story, the singer? Who are you talking to? Um, um, actually, I, I, I wrote this with it trying to be um, a fun anthem for, for women in mind. Um, cause I don't have a lot of dancey tunes. I remember my dad just saying, can you just for once do like a fun dancey tune? Like everything you do is so angry and so sad. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like it's rock. Like that's just, and I just realized like, you know, I'll write a tune, but it's not, it's still not a happy tune. It's, <laughs> it is kind of like a angry tune, but I think you know, with the the disco type of vibe to it, the mm -hmm. um, and and honestly, w with where we're at right now, and um, you know, with it being an, a woman's empowerment kind of song, um, you know, I I wanted something to yell, you know, feminism on the album. Yeah, just for me, just for my, you know. But it's not feminism. That's like abrasive to the male ego if you know what i'm saying like some some guys are like oh here comes these feminists again like <laughs> yeah. oh shit like it's not like that it's it's almost there's a part in the song where you get to um you get to the end and it's almost like a little dig at the end to whoever you're talking to this is where the question came from like who were you talking to like and you're saying you know just maybe i'm not alone beat uh, and that uh part, when I'm listening to it, right, uh, there's a certain thing that happens with film and with music called five phenomenon where you're, you're fitting in pieces that, you know, if I showed you a picture of a monkey, then I showed you a picture of a banana, then I showed you a picture of a monkey, and I showed you a picture of the tree, and then I showed you a picture of the monkey, the next picture would probably be the monkey eating the banana, right? That's what we do as humans. That's five phenomena. We fit these things together. So when you're doing that, when you say that thing, we're waiting as an audience, and it's maybe a half a second, right? Before you have that, uh, that little punch, just maybe I'm not alone. Maybe I'm uh. not enough. Oh, maybe I'm not enough. Okay. My, yeah. my apologies. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> maybe I'm not enough. Even yeah. cool. It's like a little dig, right? Uh. Like, uh, and it's not, yeah. Like listening to the song for the first time, for the, for, I can't even speak for the you first didn't think time. Think it was gonna go there? No, I knew something was gonna be there vocally, but I was waiting for it to be like overpowering, almost like a trope in a way. Like, uh, and it was like so non cliched and understated, and it was like, uh, like you put your foot down, and that for me made the whole rest of that song like mm -hmm. shine. Just that little part. I was wow. like, oh man, yeah. this chick's really fucking writing her ass off now. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> and it was just a lot of growth there. Thank um, you. Is that Tim Harker on the sax? You know, ba -ba -ba -da, you know that part? Because there's a trumpet there and there's a sax there, right? They're yeah, both there? Yeah, it's actually the three piece of trumpet. It's all trumpet. three of them. Yeah, all three of them. Yeah. Great, great tune. So, again, like, who is that to? Is it to a guy? Is it to, because a lot of your songs have this, you know, you have this very sultry, breathy voice. There's some, and we'll get into some of the other songs too. There's some like kind of sexual innuendos that are there, layered innuendos about love and relationships and that kind of thing. Like, not you personally, unless you want to, you know, but was that written to a specific type of person to a specific character like what's the story behind that song i, I just I, well honestly that one came together pretty quickly as well if i want and that was just written like i want to have like a, a fun anthemic kind of um song um for people to um dance to and like feel carefree so i didn't write with some, some sometimes i i don't have like somebody in particular in mind honestly i think that song was more for myself no oh, that's cool like it's written for myself like 
I'm gonna yell if I want. Nice. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry, everybody. Like, I'm gonna, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna. I just want to feel alive. You know, I just want to feel alive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I sing that song, I feel great. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, that's a song for me. I didn't write it for anybody else. It was just like, um, even the intro. What's the? How does that verse go? I've. Um, never been lucky, always played it safe, but life doesn't pay when you're in the slow lane. The blame game's over, did you bet on me? Yeah, I built this cage, but I found the key. I, that's not that's to nobody else except for myself. That's, that's super for me. Awesome. That song is for, for me, for sure. Don't tell me, just love me. Like, oh man. So I get to the third, when you get to the third track, right? You're playing them in order and you're like, ooh. There's something going on here. And this is where I wrote in my notes, like, who's this Matt Estrock? Like, where is this Court Street recordings? And of course you said in, in Canfield. You know, you got these guitar and drum runs, runs that are captivating. I love that your voice is kind of purposely like overmodulated, distorted, like the gains up on it. Like who made that decision? Was that Matt? Was that mixed in? Did you know it ahead of time? Cause it sometimes like that stuff is too much, right? But it was like just the right amount. Like it's just the right amount of, you know, you're putting pepper in the sauce. You just got the right dash on that. That was definitely a Mike Estock thing. Um, after I had definitely prompted him like that, ne it, I, we needed to do something because those guitars are just so like overbearing. Yeah, so like powerful. to do like a clean vocal on top of a guitar like that. John, John Anthony came to us with that. Um, and you guys basically arranged it real quick in the studio. Um, and I, I was that one. I did not know what I was going to do on top of it because it's not a song that I would ever like write on top of usually like I've never written on top of such a heavy rock tune. And, um, so the idea for it came when we came back from New Orleans. Um, I had met a dominatrix at a, at a, a, it's called the bar that's called the dungeon. And it was like red light and they were playing Marilyn Manson. And it was like so weird. Like it was nine, like 110 degrees. I'm sweating. And it's the first night we're in, in New Orleans. I don't know if it was for Jazz Fest or not, but um, which I'm so sad that they canceled this year but um because i love new orleans so much but we were there <laughs> and this dominatrix like honey you need my fan more than i do i was like thank you my makeup's melting i was like melting i was like what do you do like she had dressed up and she was like in like halloween type like gear and looked very sexy and we got to talking she's from cincinnati and she lives in the French Quarter by herself in this great like loft, she says. And she's like, yeah, I just, you know, I work at night and I sleep all day and I have fun. And, and she's just like this ball of energy and she doesn't drink. She didn't have a drink in her hand. She, and I go, do you want a drink? And she had nothing in her hand. She goes, no, I don't drink, honey. I'm like, okay, who are you? And like, how are you such a responsible like dominatrix? Like this is her job. That's what she does. And yeah, she I said just, she would travel from, from New Orleans um, all, from all throughout Cincinnati to Cincinnati down to New Orleans. And that's sort of some of the lyric in that yeah. as well. So I just that kind of that story kind of stuck with me, and I we had a uh, like a fun little meeting meeting with her, and I still have that that you have the fan the fan yeah <laughs> that she gave me <laughs> yeah, but um, John Anthony he wrote the riff, and um, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, oh, so shit. I just just I decided with John's song because it's so different from what I'm usually used to. I said, you know what, I'm gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna play. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about another character, a character which I've never done, and that is the 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 first and only song that I've ever done that on. And it was fun to do because I've I've always wanted to do it, and um, with that being such a different song that I'm used to, I felt like I could be free to do that. My favorite part vocally is that scream in the middle, because yeah. it comes from the bottom. Yeah. Up. Right. You know, it's like real you know? guttural. Kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I screamed so much. Mike Estock thought I was going to wake up his kid. It's like Axl Rose. You know, <laughs> just I think it was like jungle. at least an hour of screaming that I got that one <laughs> yeah, at, yeah. in the recording. Studio. How many takes? Like 20 takes. Oh, 
Oh God, yeah. Find the right scream. 20, 30 times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so track four, I Want Your Heart, You go. it's again one of those tracks that's kind of uh-huh. similar. They're kind, those, those songs to me are kind of tied together because again, it's that kind of distorted um, gain turned up on the vocals um purposely obviously i love that the narrator is not asking she's kind of telling or commanding her person of desire like i want your heart Mm -hmm. like not you're not saying i want you to love me you're saying like yo i want your heart great i got a feeling deep in my bones you know mm -hmm. the feeling when we're alone um yeah that's kind of just you know throwing it out there fishing for it and seeing if it if it takes uh, fruition then you downshift so track number five comes in you downshift with morning light um it's a song that's very it's got a lot of like desire that's where your voice is kind of sultry it's a sultry sound uh i just want to stay uh, I, I just want to stay up all night with you yeah uh and so i i mean i feel like i know the answer to this but like for the prodders out there what's that code for like or is the like honestly um it, it's uh another one of those songs that it's about desire but like let's see where it goes uh-huh. like what's what do we have to lose and why do we have to listen to any what anybody else says about um your relationship and and i think so many people can relate to that um and i love the idea of just like not like it it being about sex but like just like we don't have to see the world in one night just like let's just have fun let's just like be let's go out and just like make sure that we're happy and that's that's what life's about i like that the lyrics are kind of open-ended too like you're not specifically saying one thing or another it's kind of like you're leaving it up for the audience or the listener to kind of interject their own things. I think that's what great art does a lot of times where we can kind of go, oh, I associate that song because it's about X, Y, Z. And someone else listens to it and goes, no, it's not about X, Y, Z. It's about PDQ or it's about whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Number six, I'm just going to go right down the list, man. Uh, No one can tell me. Your vocal controls toward the end sound like a violin there's like this strain like if i was pulling on a string and there's a little bit of vibrato there it's really there's a ton of control and it sounds very crisp the way it was recorded of course you know we talked about this last season and you know when i first kind of heard of like the vindies and jackie popovic and so i was like oh it's like she's kind of sings like amy winehouse this song obviously leads to that like it sounds very you know, Amy Winehouse ish, if you will, but you're putting your own signature on it. Like there's a lot of great control there. How long did it take to record that track? Like, was there a lot of flubs? I mean, it's, it's kind of pristine the way that you sound your, your voice, your vocals in that, in that, in the way it's arranged, your vocals are like another instrument. And again, it kind of reminds me of a violin. I know I said it like three times. Um, thanks for saying that because I think that I did my best vocals, best ever uh, recorded vocals on that particular track. Um, I remember doing this in January of 2020, um, recording the whole album um, within about a couple weeks, just like making the track sound perfect. And then going in the next week, which everyone was sick. I I honestly, I, I don't know how, but we were all coughing in the studio at the same time. And that next week I was supposed to be doing vocals. And I had just like, I, cu- I couldn't do the vocals. I, I fought through it because Mike Astock was like, no, let's just do it. Like you sound fine. You're just being weird. But I just, I knew myself. I, I did about six songs and it was not up to par for me, but I just knew that I had to get them done. So I did them and then I listened back, listened back, and I just like, this is not right. So I told him, I said, we have to wait. And I waited two months before I felt like amazing about my voice. And I I think it was just maybe the weather or maybe whatever it was, Um, the humidity or the dry air or whatever. I just waited it until it was like the, best conditions for my voice and I think it was like in March no um it was 
February before like end of February before I felt like good. So I got in there. I didn't I didn't need more than three or four takes for anything Um, with no one can tell me. I think I needed two. Um, And that's just because I felt more confident in my voice. Um, So he is a a master um, uh, vocal he, he gets the vocal out of me. So I, I trust no one else um, but Mike Estock to get the best vocal out of me possible. And I'm, I'm glad you pointed out the vocals on that song because the performance and the take on that song out of any song in the album gives me chills. Because, I mean, you totally nailed it. And I remember you did the first, um, you laid down the first track of that when you were, you were sick. And I remember telling you, I'm like, oh, it's, it sounds great. I, th- I don't think you have to recut yeah. this. Everyone I was mean, like, sounds, sounds amazing. And and then you go in, you're like, I mean, you uh, insisted. Me you're like, no, I'm going back in. You went back in and you came back. And I remember talking to my guest doc and it's like, it just blew everybody away. Because specifically that song, your performance, um, I mean, you knocked it out of the park. When Thanks. you write something, uh, you know, my kind of modality is I write it. If I love it, I put it on the shelf for two weeks and then I come back to it. Yeah. And then sometimes I go, oh, boy, you thought that was good. This is <laughs> trash, man. You got to start, you know, page one rewrite or, hey, there's something there. But how can I push it further? Right. I like that you again, it's kind of one of these things where, you know, it's good. But you kind of check your ego and you go, fuck that, man. I know I can make this better. So is that does that happen when you write some of these tracks? You write and well, obviously happen with that um, where you write something, and then just kind of put it on the shelf. And do you ever write something and you're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And then you come back to it after it's on the shelf for a while and you go, huh, that's All terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but the the problem with doing that too much is that then then you have this. um you're like overcritical. Well, yeah, and then you have this timeline of like, oh, this sounds this song sounds different than this song and 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 it's just a very different form and um arrangement and the the sound is weird. So, it's important to get a to get the band together within a week or two and make sure that our, our ears and are fresh on it mm. and then stamp it in that time. Because if you leave it too much and poke at it too much then it it turns into something else that you just and then you might scratch it anyway so kind of lose the magic sometimes yeah yeah yeah. you gotta know when to walk away Mm -hmm. you gotta know when to hold them (laughs) um how what was that like recording this album during covid during the winter during like you guys aren't all together obviously you know people are masked and we're worried about you know i mean I used to go see my uncle play and that microphone would be like filled with spit, man, you know, or I, I'm singing in my buddy's studio and I'm spitting and <laughs> you know, what were the concerns and what was, what was that like? So COVID was not even on our radar in January of 2020. So we had recorded the whole thing. Um, early February, we had wind of some stuff, you know, but n- 2019, not- right? 2019 you're talking about. No, January even, January of 2020. January of 2020, we recorded. We uh, the majority of the album was tracked. yeah because I, I know I remember the date specifically because it was March 5th, March 4th. We went into the studio to record the last song, all and everything, which is all and everything, and it happens to be the last track on the song on the album. And March 4th, I remember being in the studio that morning with Mike Estock. We we're listening through the comps of vocals and stuff, and he's telling me about the tornadoes that happen in oh, oh. Nashville. Yeah, I got my timeline incorrect. Yeah. Right. Because so, March 17th is when everyone was like, March 17th. lock it down. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, March 5th, we were outside of Chicago. We were playing a show and people were already like fist bumping and hand sanitizing. And there were still no masks at this time. And then I just remember looking back on that March 17th date when everything shut down like holy crap we got everything done so we can all now work from home and get edits and and notes edits and notes and go back and forth so it was the perfect timing because we all took covid very seriously we you know at least for that um 
you know, the couple of months until we did the Music Cares program um, mm-hmm. UE um, thing that we recorded for uh, to benefit uh, musicians during this time, during that time. And uh, even that was scary to go out and do yeah. t- together because it was the first time, but it was also very relieving. It was in May that we got together finally um, to do this, but we were all six space, six feet apart. We were all masked up except for me when I was singing, everything was sterilized. It was very scary, but at the same time, very amazing to get together again and, and play. And now I look back at that, those times and, and, realize the shows that we didn't play and now when i'm on the stage in front of people um which is we're one of the only areas in the country that are able to do this right now that we're able to do some outside shows and get together a lot of national acts are canceling here and there but every time i'm on a stage i'm taking selfies i'm like look at like remember this like you know i'm so grateful and so humbled that we are able to get up on stage every day now and i and i feel like not that i took it for granted before but i'm definitely holding on to that now like um that the fact that we were not able to do that for quite a long time yeah and 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 what we did through let's say lockdown and sort of through you know post march of uh 2020 was go through the mixing process i mean for the listeners you know there's a few parts in the album. You're tracking the album, you're mixing the album, and then it goes to mastering. So, you know, we had pretty much tracking the album, which requires us to, to be together. But through that downtime, we were able to send it for mixing, um, sort of, you know, make changes to the mix, say, hey, no, bring up the guitar here, let's do this, let's do that. So we worked on it, um, you know, from that angle through through the rest of 2020. So th- there wasn't any like remote playing and recording, you know, one guy's recording at his place and sending the track in and you guys are, the, the album was recorded and it now was, you're just thank, putting the finishing touches. Thank yep. God. I mean, yeah, other wow. than Lee Turner, who is Darius Rucker's um, keyboard player, um, we sent it out to him to do all and everything, the keys on that. So mm-hmm. we went back and forth a couple of times with that. But other than that, I mean, everything was done. And I just remember saying, thank God. Well, the, the song before All and Everything, which is, again, kind of like the coda to the album, mm-hmm. uh, you, again, you downshift with To Misery. It's like kind of like a, I'm going to drop it down into second gear. We've been in like fourth, fifth gear, running hot. And the tempo kind of picks back up and it builds and builds and has this like, which is, I love music that does this, right? It starts in one place and it chug, 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 chug. So I love Led Zeppelin. People can say I'm corny or whatever, but it just kind of chug, chug, chugs and brings the the listener to the apex, right? To the crescendo where it's like, yes. Uh, and that's how this song feel, uh, uh, feels. And also the control of your voice is very similar. Um, uh, in that song, this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of vibrato, um, I'm finally free because loving you led to my misery. Uh, the guitar part is fire on that again. Is that you, Rick, on that? Um, on the solo, that's John. John but, again, but, yeah. But that's such a riffy yeah. song to begin with. And, and so the that song Wait, started. Man, man, man. Yeah. I'm Play that part. Yeah, do it up, man. Let's let's yeah, see. <laughs> let's see. Wait, where's my? Uh, I dropped my pick somewhere. Let's see. I'll just play with your fingers, man. Yeah. Whole step higher or lower. I've always done what I can. I know I've paid my dues. No, I don't expect too much but just a little love I guess I should feel believed cause I'm sick of trying no I don't expect too much but just a little love but it gets easier Cause I found the final
such an absolute pleasure to sit here and listen to you guys play like in a very raw you know you know so prodders you know rick's sitting here with an amp and a guitar in front of him and we're just in front of like some real rudimentary recording stuff and you guys sound amazing oh. you know obviously you guys play a lot together so you're a well-oiled machine <laughs> uh, but it's like a real pleasure man to sit here and listen to you guys thank you thank you but um, but this song in particular um, that was another one just like Judas where I sang and it was just like and it was just like it was another one that I I sang then I was just like like Judas it was kind of put together yeah um, but I remember us sitting by a vocal melody and then you were working around it late at night yeah because I had my guitar and and we were trying to come up with something for this song and I'm like you know what put down the guitar. And this song was written totally on bass. I just needed a, a yeah, different yeah. perspective because, I mean, those riffs were just all supposed to be bass riffs and you work the melody around that and then, you know, and then it just sort of evolved from there. It's funny how, like, it, 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 you write a different song or a different style of a song, whether you're writing, if you're writing on acoustic, it most likely is going to end up sounding like a country song. If you write an electric, <laughs> it's mostly going to sound like a rock song. If you write keys, it's going to be a pop tune. If you write on bass, it's going to be like a funk soul kind of thing. So it, it's a, it's really dependent on on what you're playing, and and sometimes you get a better inspiration from a different um, uh, instrument that you play. Well, I'm getting like a real education here. I'm going to kind of take these little nuggets that you're laying down and <laughs> apply them to my own writing at times. Uh, but the Vindies, prodders out there, you've got a little sampling now, but Vindies, Rick, Jackie, tell us where you guys are going to be. Let's talk about some of these upcoming shows where audiences can go out and see you. I know you guys are in Columbus on the 10th of September. Yeah, we're kinda... playing with uh, Paul Thorne at the Anthenaeum, which is our first time, which we are, that's going to be a, a fun show. Yeah. Um, and then the 11th, we're outside of Chicago. Again, we're at Winnetka, um, and that's called the Emerge Series. And Val's List, who used to do a um, playlist for uh, the New York Times, um, she puts this event on every year, and she's just a great person to know, and um, uh, we really adore her. Um, Emerge is going to be – we've done this a couple times now, so we're happy to be back there. Um and then we have um, Pat Benatar um, and uh, Geraldo is Neil, her husband. Neil, yeah. Yeah. Neil Geraldo. Um, that's going to be at the MGM in Northfield outside of Cleveland. So that'll be um, September 18th. And then... Um, Regarding that, tickets are almost... almost I think, they're, I think they're sold out, but you could probably get them on StubHub. 
That's going to be a great show for you guys. Like, what a great way to open up. I've seen them live, uh, uh, Pat and Neil together. Pat and Neil, like they're my buddies. <laughs> like, yeah, me and Pat and Neil. But they're fine. They're, he's, I didn't really know much about him when I first saw them. You know, of course, I knew Pat Benatar. I grew up in the 80s and loved her music. And when I, my wife and I went and saw them live, and he is fucking incredible like he's an incredible guitar player so what a great did you see them together i saw them together so yeah. what was it like acoustic like or stripped down no it no? was not no they had a band, they band. Put, yeah 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 okay. is it stripped down with their plan i'm not sure oh yeah. I, that's what i'm asking like oh, right. what they usually do because i've seen videos where it's like a stripped down kind of thing with them two together but yeah no they had i want to say they had a full band i think it was a four piece and okay. she's obviously incredible and he i was like who's this neil gerardo guy you know when we got the tickets didn't know it was her husband didn't know he was like the main songwriter he's a killer yeah. man he's like a savage on guitar he's yeah, really he great that's a great you guys are gonna get some great looks and what a great fit like your music and her music together we're super excited i'm super I'm, excited you know, for you man yeah. yeah yeah i yeah i mean i think that i was wearing a pat benatar t-shirt i was like trying to look through some of my photos like um from five years ago when we first started out and we were on this i swear it was like the stage was as big as this table um with five people on it um at canton it was george's and i had that pat benatar yeah, yeah, yeah. t-shirt on and That's right. and just like to know that like we're going to be opening up for pat benatar and, just occurred and, to me jack yeah. there's a theme going on here every band t-shirt that you wear we end up opening for them oh <laughs> why well the donny iris shirt was oh, in, you yeah. know and now we're you know <laughs> right. donny iris well, now pet benatar start getting so. some t-shirts of bands you want to open up <laughs> you know for, the be rolling next, stones right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's a that's a good point like uh, i i'm gonna work on that um <laughs> what are some other shows uh, coming we've up? got a uh, uh in October 16th, we're at Stage AE in Pittsburgh. Um, we are opening for Rita Wilson and Orianthe. Oh, cool. Um, and the I think uh, Sheila E is coming out to accept the award for... Um, I will take your word on it. Uh, she's coming out <laughs> to accept an award. <laughs> um, but what, what, what is going on at Stage AE with Women Who Rock? They're partnering with McGee Women's Research Institute in Pittsburgh. They are the first and the largest, actually, uh, research institute solely based on women's health. Um, they um, are doing some amazing things right now in ovarian cancer um, research and um, other things as well. And this starts at not just um, it's re reproductive health all the way to, um, um, you know, Two to ninety-two, basically, for women. So I'm, I love supporting them. Um, and if you want to, you know, support the program, you can look my name up. Look up Jackie Popovec, Women Who Rock, um, on Google, and you'll find my ambassador page. I'm raising money for them. Um, but that's going to be a great event. And in the side, um, who's the other, um, the other person on the bill? Because the drummer, and you'll appreciate this, is uh, Rick Allen from Def Leppard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Holy he's, smoke! Yeah, he's playing drums with her. So. I didn't even know he was still playing. I thought they no they kind of dropped out for a yeah. minute there. Yeah, but um. So, yeah, that's happening um, October sixteenth at Stage AE, and I want to make this right. It's a Lauren Monroe with special guest Rick Allen of Def Leppard and Women Who Rock Impact Award recipient Sheila E. So we'll be opening Super for man. that, and then. Um, one more thing is yeah, we, have a two, <laughs> we have a, a two show back to back November 18th and November 19th at the Music Box in Cleveland. Nice. So that'll be um, um, a spaced out show. And that's why we're doing a two show um, thing for that. So, and that's going to be inside. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, you know, I, I don't know what this fall is going to look like. We're just kind of playing it by we're, we're all just playing it by ear at this point. So, um, you know, hope for the best and prepare for the worst kind of thing. So. Tell me where listeners can get bugs online. And also, if you are listening in the 330 and you're from the greater Warren Youngstown area, where can we pick up a copy and get it in our hands and pop it in a CD player? So if you want it in your hands, you can go to the Record Connection right now and uh, visit our friend Jeff Burke over there. What up, um, Jeff? He's got um, our vinyls, the... Um, 
the Keep Going vinyls, the CDs, um, our EPs and everything. So um, the new album is there, the CD. We're working on getting the vinyl. It is so hard right now <laughs> to get vinyl going. And yeah, nobody has it. Nobody has it right now. It, it, hopefully we can release something by like a record store day. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, something that we're working on still. So And we we are selling more and more vinyl than, than CDs um, all the time. Um, people are getting back into it and we're excited about that uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can get that sooner than later and then like Spotify and iTunes like where can we find your stuff is it our website you yeah, kind of give can, listeners that you have on honestly you can find it on any like one of your fa- favorite streaming platforms um, we're on Spotify iTunes Amazon um Anywhere you get music, iCloud, SoundCloud, <laughs> iCloud, SoundCloud, <laughs> but, yeah, YouTube. But if you go to thevindies.com, all of the social links are down at the bottom um, to any streaming platform or... Follow our Facebook, our Instagram, our um, YouTube, our Linktree. Yep. Everything. You can watch them live on Whiskey Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I offered them some whiskey. I have some Japanese whiskey left over, but <laughs> we're going to maybe do that another time. Yeah, well, when we can come back and, and uh, finish up the song. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, listeners, lovers, and friends, you have been listening to Miss Jackie Popovic and Mr. Rick Deke from The Vindies. You can check them out at thevindies.com. Uh, we will be hearing from them again I'd love to have you guys on again uh, and talk more music and I really appreciate you guys taking the time today to kind of walk listeners through and myself of kind of lifting back the veil and seeing behind uh, the seeing looking into what artists do in order to bring you the music that you love seeing into that writing process I think is really interesting so I appreciate you guys coming out today and and sharing that thank you thank you and adding to title town who knows maybe that's something that we'll release all together in the near future yeah i'd love to that's a great song i appreciate that